Hello, in this video we're going to look at the integral form of the remainder of a Taylor series. And so we're really not going to cover much of the Taylor series. Uh, that'll be in another video. So this is the general form of a Taylor series expansion for some function f. Uh, and the remainder is thought of, instead of going to infinity, go to some n, and then how close is it? Well, if you take the difference between this number and this number, which is this, then that's called the remainder. And then we want the remainder in limit to go to zero, and then that says this converges to f of x. But let's uh, look at the integral form of the remainder. So let's let f be in this. So what this says, it's, it's n plus one differentiable and that function is continuous, what, what is what that means. It also is, applies to lower. So the, you know, if two is less than n plus one, then two, you know, it's, it's differentiable twice and that differentiable function is continuous. That's this notation. We're gonna let uh, some point A be in our interval. Oh, and, and this applies to the inter some interval. We're going to let A be in that interval and X be in that inter interval. Uh, and then the, re the remainder, which is this, can be written in integral form. And the proof is this, and we're going to use uh, uh, induction. So we're going to show it's true for n equal 1. So the remainder for 1, remember we're going to start up here. Then it's f of X minus f of A minus, you know, the first derivative of f evaluated a x minus a that is this form here now this can be written in integral form like this and then so can this you factor out this piece and then x minus a is is this and now we do that because we have two integral signs with the same limits and it's uh it's a linear operator so we can combine those into one and now we're going to use integration by parts. We're going to let u equal this piece. So du is, is uh, this. dv is just t. And then v, when you integrate it, it's t minus, and then we add a, a constant x. So then you put plug it into the formula. This is uv evaluated x and a so now notice that when we evaluate we put in the x right here that's zero and then when we put in an a for t this part goes to zero so this goes away and then we're left with this piece and this is in integral form so n equals one is true now we assume it's true for some k and then we show that it must also be true for k plus one so this is the remainder for k, and we're assuming that it's true. So in this case, it could be k equals 1. You know, it, it, we've shown that it's true for at least one value. So we assume it's true for k, and we're going to prove it for k plus 1. So here's the remainder for k plus 1 is this, and that's from that previous page. So it's the, you know, the function minus the Taylor series, you know, where we stop at the k plus 1 term. Now, um, here, we can, that since it's a sum, we can break it up into the last term and then the first k terms, right? So it does, this doesn't change. But this right here is the kth remainder. And we assume that this condition is true. So we can just put this in here. And then this, um, we can show that we can write this as an integral. So we factor out the constant and then a k plus, you know, a k factorial. And then we evaluate this at k. So this, you know, becomes x to the minus, you know, t over k plus 1 divided by, you know, uh, k plus 1. And then that factors in. Um, so now, but we do this because we have two integral signs and it's a linear operator, so we can combine this. Uh, the k factorial comes out front, and then we have the x minus t to the kth, that's this, and then we have to bring those in here. 
Now, let's evaluate this by integration by parts. So this would be our U, and then DU, we get this. This is our, this is our DV, and then we integrate it and we get this. Now we plug those in. So this is UV, but notice when we plug in X, this goes to zero, which makes it go to zero, and we plug in A, then this goes to zero, which makes it go away. So this ends up being zero. Now don't forget about this K factorial, one over K factorial, because it goes into both of them. And I guess I forgot my bracket right there. Um, then when we look at what's left is we take the K plus one to get K factorial, and then it's the integral of this. And that's actually what we wanted to show. So we're done. So it is true the remainder can be represented as an integral. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. It's kind of a neat result. Um, like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.